Hi everyone! Welcome to Catholic Online Sunday School. Before we get started, let's pray the opening prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, thank you for gathering us today. And thank you for allowing us to offer up our time and heart to you so that we learn from you and get closer to you. Please always watch over us and protect us from all evils in this world. And please prepare us for eternal life and grant us for a bigger glory in heaven. We ask these through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are getting toward the end of the semester. And before we finish this semester, I want to ask you this question. What is church in your life? Did you answer well? Or were you confused? Let me change this question. Do you think you belong to the church? Do you think you are part of the church? Many of you might answer yes because you already clicked Catholic Online Sunday School and you have a desire to know about the teachings of the church. Then, let me ask another question. Do you think you are a customer of the church or a builder of the church? Was it easy to answer? By this question, you may look back on your faith life and have many thoughts. This question can be extended to more detailed questions. First, when you hear people criticize the church, do you keep distance from the church and step away from the church? Or do you try your best to defend the church? I have seen many people leave the church when scandals or difficult times arise, but I also know many saints who have stood up during difficult times. For example, St. Francis or St. Catherine of Siena went through difficult times of the church, but they helped the church to be resilient and made important reconciliation and renovation in the church. St. Francis lived in a time when the church authorities were corrupted, but he lived a life of poverty and rebuilt the church by founding Franciscan order. St. Catherine of Siena lived in a time when the church was suffering from the authority of the Pope. At the time, the Pope was under the influence of French king and lived in France. It is a problem because Popes are Bishop of Rome and should live in Rome. But with prayer and patient plea to the Pope, St. Catherine of Siena could bring the Pope back to Rome. Can you see that these two saints help the church when it is under a difficult time? Second question is this. When you see that your parish needs volunteers, do you step up out of the love of God or you think it is not your job? When you step up, you are offering your time, talent, and treasure to God. Every one of us has duties in this world and it is not always easy to offer your time, talent, and treasure to the church. Some people also find themselves that prayer is the best way they can help the church. But it is obvious that Jesus wants us to gather in the church and the church needs our hands to be built and be strengthened. From these questions, 
I want to put emphasize that the church is mine and yours. It is not someone else's who is more involved in the church. You are a part of the church like a family, and we are on a mission to build and spread the church. Do you think you can do this? You may have fear or reluctance at first, but with God, nothing is impossible. And the early church shows us how to build and spread the church. Let's read the books of Acts. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. Here, we can see that the early church did four things. Teachings, community from the communal life, the breaking of the bread, and prayer. These four things are what the church should do and needs to be the church. The church should teach people so that we know God clearly and get closer to God. The church is a community that people gather in God's name and love God. The breaking of the bread symbolizes sacrament of Eucharist and all the sacraments. The church should give the sacraments so that we can receive the graces of the Holy Spirit and be strengthened in our faith. The church should pray so that we can listen to God's voice. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is a very thick book, but basically it has four sections. The profession of faith, the celebration of Christian mystery, life in Christ, and Christian prayer. These four things are exactly what the early church did. The profession of faith is about creed. Creed, whether being the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, corresponds to the teachings because it summarizes our faith. The celebration of the Christian mystery is about church's liturgy and sacraments, and it corresponds to the breaking of the bread because breaking the bread is sacrament of Eucharist, and the sacrament of Eucharist is the sacrament of sacraments. Life in Christ is about moral life, and it corresponds to community because we need morality to keep community healthy. And Christian prayer apparently corresponds to prayer. And these four things are called four pillars of truth. St. Paul said, You should know how to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of truth. So we, the church, should keep these four things and nourish them in order to make the church strong. The four pillars of truth also relates to the four marks of the church. One, holy, catholic, and apostolic. At Nicene Creed, we profess that the church is one, holy, catholic, and apostolic. The church is one because we are all gathered in the name of God and it corresponds to the community. The church is holy because Jesus gave us seven sacraments to sanctify the church and it corresponds to sacraments. The church is Catholic or universal because the teachings of Jesus are universal. And prayer is available for everyone in all nations, so it corresponds to prayer. The church is apostolic because Jesus chose the apostles to lead the church. The Pope and bishops 
are the successors of the apostles and hand on the teachings of the church. So apostolic corresponds to teaching. The four pillars of truth also can be represented as the sign of the cross. Prayer is communicating with God. We listen to God and talk to God through prayer. Prayer connects us to God. So prayer is a vertical stick from us to God. Then sacraments is what touches God. By sacraments, we receive the graces of the Holy Spirit and get closer to God. So sacrament is on God's side of the vertical stick. The teachings of the church and community make the horizontal stick of the cross. The sign of the cross is one of the sacramentals that blesses ourselves. Whenever we make the sign of the cross, we bless us and remember Jesus' cross on our body. But now we have learned that the sign of the cross also symbolizes the four pillars of truth. So every time we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we also remember that the Father part corresponds to sacraments, the Son part corresponds to prayer, and the Holy Spirit part corresponds to teachings of the church and the community. Then we can participate in building the church in a healthier and a stronger way. That's it today. It's been a year since I started this online Sunday school. I know I am far from perfect presenter, but I can dare to say that I did my part in the church's teaching. I try to organize contents because I always learn better when the contents are organized. I also added visual aids so that you can understand better. Preparing for the videos was a blessing to me as well. While I was preparing for this Sunday school, I learned a lot from the catechism and other resources. I was amazed by the rich traditions and beauty of the church. I am sure that our efforts to learn about God benefit not only ourselves, but also the whole church. Please know that I have prayed for you all the way from the beginning that your knowledge and love in God increase. And if you have learned something from this online Sunday school, please practice them in your life. When you practice what you have learned, you are serving God. And when you live as a Christian, People will see God from your life. St. Peter said this, Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. I hope you can testify God through your life, and when time comes, you can explain what you believe to others. Then let's close today's class with a closing prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, thank you for your mercy and love. You are always good and you know each of us by name. Please help us to respond to your love and walk in you all throughout our lives. You are our God, and we are your children. We ask these through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope you all stay happy and healthy until we meet again. Bye-bye.